Welcome to episode 111 of Broad Street Hustle. Tonight, we're going to take a dive into the world of golf. I'm your host, Tommy Nanny, as we talk about the 124th U.S. Open at Pinehurst number two. Will Scotty continue his dominance? Will Xander break through again after finally winning a major? Will Rory break his 10-year, what he has, a decade drought? Um, or are we going to see a dark horse come through? Let's jump into it. Who else do we have to round out this foursome? Oh, we got, we're short a guy. We only got a threesome today, so we're going to have to get a walker with us. We got Jason Sayetta. Hey, Tom, what's going on? Jason, how are you? Jimmy Talk is under the weather, so we do not have him tonight. But we do have our golf expert who did not make the PGA, although we did have a very good show for PGA, I will say. Jason made, had the winner, and we sprinkled in a few long shots. Is Kevin Krieger. Kevin, how are you? Good, good to be back, boys. Nice to Dealing have. Dealing with some uh, legal issues last time. You know, me and Scotty both had a rough week. But <laughs> yeah, the only thing that stopped Scotty at the PGA was the uh, the unlawful arrest. And um, yeah, how about before we jump into it, too? Rom backing out here in the last, you know, in the last couple of days, right? Was that was that expected or was that unexpected? Or uh, they were saying that he he had this foot issue or toe issue, and he was like he was going to try and play. I was dead against him. So, of course. Yeah, I, I mean, kind of shocking. It sounds like it's just like a little cut around his toe. Mm -hmm. I, I Didn't he know. have – he, he had issues like – well, No, he has club feet. Yeah, right, 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 right. That's he's what it is. born with that, which kind of is why he's like such a short swing, I guess, is what he's saying. But um, no, I think he dropped out in the live event last week. But, I mean, this is the U.S. Open. Like, yeah. you got to buck up. I, I mean – yeah, I, I was I was against him too. I mean, his form hasn't been great ever since got got to live, but you know. All right, yeah. well, let's uh, let's take so before we kick it off, we we're we we're bouncing around before the show. Kevin, you've played or been to Pinehurst, um, never played number two where the where the open is today. Uh, yeah, been uh, and actually heading there back in two weeks. Again, not to play number two. Try to get on. Um, been on the grounds. It's definitely a big boy course. I mean, not um, the most scenic, right, from, you know, you look at, at Valhalla. It's almost like a 180 from Valhalla, which is a kind of a made-for-TV golf course. Um, ton of water features. I mean, some was a little kitschy, you know, the waterfalls. Um, but Pinehurst, I mean, it's the cradle of golf for a reason. Hall of Fame, <clears throat> Golf Hall of Fame officially moved back to Pinehurst. Um, I mean, the Donald Ross classic, um, I think there's 117 bunkers in one water feature, but I mean, the story is, I'm, I'm sure, you know, Jay will get into, it's all about the greens, green complexes on this course, um, which Court Crenshaw renovated, restored it back to, to Donald Ross's original design back in, I think, 2010. 2010. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm kind of looking back or looking forward to some carnage in the U.S. Open in the last few years. LACC, I mean, you had Xander and uh, Wendell. Uh, Ricky shoots 62 in a U.S. Right. Open. I mean, that doesn't, you know, feel right. I mean, we haven't, not since uh, Shinnecock when Kepka won, I think, won over, was the last, you know, classic U.S. Open. And I think, you know, this week might be like that from the Greens. Um yeah, but I, I mean, I think even though I haven't played number two, all the courses in the area are built amongst the the sand hills of North Carolina. So you get a lot. Of, I mean, there's a ton of native area. I mean, hardly any rough in the courses around there, but Tobacco Road's one course. I mean, it's not anything like number two, but comparable in the sense that the biggest defense is these native areas. It's filled with, I mean, wire grass, I think is a term that you'll hear about 100 times this weekend watching the broadcast. But it's nasty. It's clumpy. I mean, if you're behind it, in front of it, it's almost. I mean, unless you get the foot wedge out, you're kind of, you know, chipping sideways from from this, you know, dense, thick, clumpy grass. Um, but it's, yeah. I mean, not wide fairways, ton of angles, ton of ways to play the, the course. Uh, but small greens and diabolical, you know, turtle shell type greens. So it'll be fun. I mean, putting and and you know, chipping around the greens is going to be paramount. But um yeah one of the toughest courses I actually put my handicap calculator in to see 
what my handicap would be if I played U.S. Open tees um, at Pinehurst number two. Technically, I guess I'm a, a four handicap, even though I haven't been playing to that as of late. Um, but the handicap ca- calculator had me at a 14 at the U.S. Open tees from uh, Pinehurst number two. So that'll be yeah. better than some of the players probably this this week. I mean, you know, no, we're gonna yeah. see some. 80s scores yeah. for sure. Usually, all right. Yeah. And as Jeff, um, Kevin has alluded to, he he gave some background on the course. And Jason, you have a little bit more to to go into some of the history or the course itself, and yeah. the, you know what types of players excel at this course. Yeah. So uh, some of these facts I'm, I'm going to give out. Kevin mentioned, but um, it's Pinehurst number two. It's a Donald Ross course. The course was restored in 2010. Um, Firm sand, pine straw, and wiregrass, as Kevin mentioned. Um, the last time the Open was played there was two, the oh, U.S. Open was played there was 2014. Martin Keimer won by like eight strokes. Um, he was like nine under, and I think the net, next closest is one under. Like he, blew yeah, I think away. only two other players were on the par. Yeah, he yeah. was just on a year. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, I heard someone mention that you could be very aggressive off the tee, but very you need to be very conservative on your approach shots because you almost want to aim for the middle of the of the green and then be happy to two putt because, like Kevin mentioned, it's like a it's a turtle shell green. So if you're not if you, if you're not anywhere close to the center of the green, you're gonna roll off and roll into God knows what, right? Uh, so. Um, the course is long. It's 7,543 yards. It is, uh, a par 70. Um, it had changed the, when they, when they changed over the grass, um, after I believe the last U op- uh, S open, they made a Bermuda grass. So, uh, because of that, you look for Florida form, right? So, um, Golfers who've played well in Florida on Bermuda grass may, may play well here. Um, there's 117 bunkers on the course. I thought that was interesting. Um, and the 18th hole is, and we could get into some talking about some holes, but the 18th hole is iconic because of Payne Stewart in 1999. Like he, he, he hit that putt to win. And I know there's statue a statue. Of, yeah, there's yeah. a statue of him. Um, as far as who excels at this course, um, your, it's an approach shot course, like I mentioned. So, like, iron play is very important. Um, again, you don't want to be aggressive and, and pin hunt with the irons. You kind of want to just get it in the middle of the green and then probably try to two-puff from there. Uh, 45 of the last 46 majors winners were top 50 players. So, for the most part... You know, these guys that are 125 and 200 to 1, they're not winning. Uh, you need to be in form, obviously, um, to, to, to win a, a tournament like this. Um, and what was Wyndham Clark last year? He wasn't he not 95 to 1, 85 to 1? Uh, he, yeah, he was a bomb. He was a bomb. He must have been top 50, though, because I, I, would, I would imagine Keimer was probably, and we could. Oh yeah, and Timer even or will it or will it? Maybe even will it. Was I mean, this course that you have, the last two winners are Keimer and Michael Campbell, which his only victory ever was the 2004, I think U.S. Open. So yeah, I, I thought mean, I heard, wasn't there only like one or two guys who had to go through the qualifying to win? Like, wasn't actually, you know, got in on based on like whatever one. number. I think yeah, Glover, that, did Lucas Glover win. Exactly. No, he's uh, never won. Well, 45 or 46. So 46 would be like the last 12 years. So that would take us back to. Oh, you were you know, saying majors. I thought you were saying majors. So yes, yes, say. yes, 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 majors. So, um, and then uh, I guess, uh, where did I leave off? So uh, the two things I used were uh, uh, strokes gained approach the green and strokes gained around the green. Those were the two stats that I kind of um, I focused on, but uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, one other you... stat I one other stat I did have is uh, 
the winner, like the winner of the U.S. Open, I believe, and I, I don't know how far back it goes, but had a win uh, in the, in within the year. Like, so you should be looking for, for yeah. golfers that have already yeah. won. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And then uh, you said about the par 70, and I don't know if you have, like, all the holes or looked at some of those. But isn't there a couple par fours or at least one par four that's, like, Almost should be a part like plays as a par five. Well, yeah, right. Other uh, than this week, it plays as a par seventy two. They converted, they convert to the par fours to five or fives to fours. Right. Yeah, so they're the, gonna they they play like a five. So it's the sixteenth sixteenth hole is yeah. one of the longest par fours in championship. So that's probably the hole. That's one of the holes. I'm sure that's a par five normally number, that they made a par number four. Yeah, I number think four, early, Yeah, four. That's the one. Par four five twenty eight. Yeah, yeah, par four. Yep, yep. The fourth hole changed to par four. Yep, I have that also. And then, if I remember, you, you're going to be hitting like a pretty low iron, like long irons into those greens that are turtle shells, like you said. Mm -hmm. So, trying to get them to place and is you're going to see a lot of runoffs. I mean, I sure. believe there's only two par fives on the whole course. Yeah, number ten and ten, which is. 617 on the card and the fifth so that's hole. A, a media par five and then yeah the fifth at 588 so and then the greens do they typically like um are they typically like tough to stick or they do they run fast or is it just the undulations and they're the gonna be fast the oh gonna, yeah fast and yeah. i mean you look at the weather forecast it's going to be hot and you, they dry. I mean, not much rock hard. To them out, but they're saying 95. I mean, you're going to see that purple sheen come Saturday, Sunday. But the other thing, too, is, I mean, there's small greens to begin with. But because of, you know, the turtle shell shape, the actual size of, you know, the, the hittable or holdable portion of the green where they can even put pin positions. Um, there was something on the line from US Open last night. I mean, it's effectively half of the existing square footage of the green. So, I mean, you're hitting, I know there's talk about Augusta where you have to hit the certain shelves and, and quadrants. <clears throat> I mean, these greens, you know, you're hitting to maybe three yard, you know, circles on, on some of these holes to be able to hold the green. But um, I mean, that's why I think, I don't know if we'll get to our, our, our you know, score prediction, but you know, I don't think we're going to see many red figures by the end of the week. There's a bet yeah. out there for um, the – I think the over-under is like five, five under for a round. So you could bet, will any golfer shoot five under for any round? I don't see – I mean, if Scotty wasn't playing, I'd take that in a second. But You never know with Scheffler. But, yeah, I, I think you're yeah. looking at – like you said, I think you're looking at like three, four under as the winner. Yeah, and I think the winning score over under is at two sixty four and a half, so that would put it at minus five and a half. So that's you know I kind of like the over on that over. Point. Well, yeah, so, so if it's par five or worse, it's par seventy, so it would be two eighty for. Par. I'm sorry, two seventy four and a half. Two seventy four. Okay, and a half. So yeah, six, yeah, six under. Yeah. Six under. So, so five under or worse, you take the over. Six under or better. With Scheffler, though, like, yeah, just like you said with Kymer, where Kymer was nine under and the rest of the field was one and two under, you could see yeah. something like that again. Where Scheffler, and that's the, they're not really predicting any wind. I mean, that's the thing. If there was wind, it would be carnage the whole time. But yeah. these guys are so good, this, you know, these days. But yeah, but with that, with those, um, the greens being so, you know, like we were talking about, wouldn't that make the driving accuracy also? I know, Jason, you said like you have a little forgiveness off the tee and it's more about the approach. But I mean, with not being accurate and have so, to play from that rough, it, it's going to make a long iron out of the rough into a, you know, a green that's there, hard to stop. And, yeah. I mean, there really isn't any rough. It's just the native area. Right. You know, so if you're hitting out of the pine needles, you know, it's going to be hard to stop. The, the bar is hard to stop. Yeah. The problem is like, yeah, you might get it in the fairway, but you might not be in a good spot, right? You need oh, to yeah. be in good position in the fairway for your approach shot. Classic so, Donald Ross. Yep, yep. Uh, it's almost, yeah, you have to play the hole backwards, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of time, depending on the pin position. I mean, there's a dead side of the fairway and, you know, a, a better side of the fairway. 
Um, yeah. This this isn't a course like for a bomber, like a bomber, like a, like a Deshambo. Mm-hmm. I don't th- I don't think this course plays no. to his strengths at, at all. Like a guy who's just going to bomb it and yeah, yeah. You know he doesn't care how far you know off the fairway he is, and then he's just going to drop it onto the green. Not on this course. No. All right. Okay, Kevin, did you have uh, some some things to fill in the blanks for that Jason may have missed around the course and you know what to look for with kind of golfers, etc. Um, no, Jay covered a lot. I mean, just kind of a couple historic facts. So this is the it's only the fourth U.S. Open of Pioneer Summer Two, but it's actually the and the hundred twenty fourth overall, but it's the the one thousandth USGA Championship. Which I thought it's pretty cool. Also coincides with, like I said, the Golf Hall of Fame moving back to Pinehurst this year. Um, just about the complex in general. I mean, they now have 11 courses uh, on property. Um, number 10 just opened this year. And then the Cradle, which is like a, a short course that opened, I think, a couple of years ago. Um, and then there's something like 70 more golf courses you know, within 30 minutes of Pinehurst. I mean, it is a golf mecca. Like I said, I'm going back again third time in a couple of weeks. Um, and you stay on, on the on the property itself? In April, I will. We'll be staying at the, the Carolina Hotel, which is, you know, the original, I think the original clubhouse on four, but it's that old school Southern charm, you know, the big wraparound, you know, decks, you know, Adirondack rocking chairs, um, you know, for any golf nut, you know, I've been to Bandon, <clears throat> been to um, Stream Song, you know, been to the Carolinas, been to, you know, Sand Hills, but Pinehurst is the Mecca. It's the Mecca. It's the cradle of golf. Very good. <clears throat> All right. Well, I how... have some holes. You want to talk oh, about yeah, yeah. Go holes? for holes. Yeah. I know yeah, you so mentioned the first, 18 was the iconic, but keep going. Yeah, I'm not, you know, I have about six holes to talk about. So the first hole is a short iron approach, but if you miss, you're in, you're in bad trouble. So um, the second hole is a long par four. The fourth hole we mentioned is, you know, it's a hole that, that is changed to a par four. I guess it's normally a par five. Um, fifth hole is a par five. Um, but if you could get there in two, I think, Pretty much, they say it's a miracle to get there in two shots. So, uh, I don't see many eagles happening there. The six holes a long, tough par three. Uh, we mentioned the 16th hole is one of the longest par fours in championship golf, and then uh, we also mentioned, you know, that 18th hole is just iconic because of the that paint still were put in pose in 1999. All right, let's. Uh, I guess let's just jump into it, right? Let's just start talking about uh, some golfers. So we're not. We didn't do the draft, which we we do a lot of times, and that kind of gets the juices flowing of guys to, that we might like and don't like. Um, so no draft tonight, but we'll, we could jump into. I mean, I don't know, Jason. You want to kick us off with just like, you know, kind of take it where you want. If you want to give out your winner, yeah. if you want to do some winners and then go in the long shot yeah i'll give you some more winners and then we'll come back or go around and get some some top 20s and stuff like that so uh, i'm gonna give you guys one guess on who i'm picking to win the tournament um other than scotty or <laughs> no other than no uh, i'm very heavy on scotty scheffler to win this tournament for for a number of reasons um i i think this tournament this this course is plays right into his strengths um, you know, he's a guy that's probably the best iron player in the world, right, with his approach shots and stuff. So um, putting putting isn't as important, I would say, in this tournament because you just want to – you're looking to two-putt, I think, once you get onto the, onto the green. So You also are going to have that. a lot of – you're going to have a lot of, like, rolling off, and it's going to be the, the – the around the green that's going to be more important right than the which itself. he's great at and he's yeah. great at, at that stuff so and, and i think get yeah, yeah. texan texas wedge i mean that's what martin Conner did in 2014 i mean you can put it well off the green kind of link style so mm-hmm. um yeah. and i think he's got to spur up his ass from that getting arrested last tournament and that probably cost him i mean he was probably winning that tournament if he doesn't get 
you know, yeah. that sa- the sa- he was awful on Saturday, which is, you know, his adrenaline had kind of got zapped out of him from the day before. So uh, I think for a number of reasons that Scheffler is going to win this tournament. Um, if by chance he doesn't, I'll give you guys, let's see, four other guys who I thought had a shot. I mean, listen, you know, Kepka's form hasn't been great, but he did play a really good fourth round uh, in the PGA tournament, and then he we ended up finishing top ten uh, last week in live. We know he's a big game hunter. Uh, we know the U.S. Open is one of the one of the tournaments he always shows up for. Um, I won't count him out at this tournament. Uh, I took a shot on him. Um, I think this this course plays very well for Matsuyama. Um, you know, I I, I always I, and his odds were crazy. Like I I got Matsuyama at like fifty well, his, to one. His form has kind of been. He's like had a couple bad round, couple bad tournaments the last few. I think is why, right? Uh, he I was think. hanging around last tournament. I mean, I don't know where he Memorial. Finished. I think he was top ten. I mean, Masters. He was decent. Yeah. I, I just I, I I think he's a I think I mean he is, is I think he's shot number one shots gain around the green as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There you go. Um, another guy who we'll we'll talk about a little bit later is Cam Smith. Again, I think this plays to his his strengths uh, as a short game player. You know, uh, he um, he hasn't had great form, but uh, he was good in the Masters. Um, Get where he finished, but I'm pretty sure he was top ten. He was definitely top twenty uh, in the Masters, and I think there's some value on him. I believe I got him as well at fifty to one. Um, and then uh, the last guy I'll give you as a little bit of a bomb, but I, I you know, Thigal is going to win one of these tournaments, and I don't know which one it is, but I don't want to not have him to to win one of these majors. Um, I don't see him winning the the open. So I think it's going to be, you know, one of these first three and I got him at 60 to one, you know, just took a flyer on him because he's talented enough to, to win one of these. Yeah. yeah um, the of go ahead. Okay. No, no, I was saying he's in the mix of uh, Valhalla PGA. He, he, yeah, he's, uh, he's going to win one of these, one of these years. Yeah, Kev, and I have I have a question for you guys, but I'll let Kev go first before I kind of throw it out there. So same same thing, Kev. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, so I actually parlayed Scotty already with uh, the Phillies and Pirates last night, so which both hit. So I got to basically get ten to one. That's great off that parlay. Um, but I mean, I think there's a lot of value. I mean, I might look to add a little bit more even though you know three to one is kind of the best that you can get him which is i mean again haven't seen since tiger odds that low um but actually a lot of interesting odds for winner without scotty Mm -hmm. um because one guy that i think now that he kind of got the monkey off his back getting his first major uh at the pga i mean xander is has consistently been second behind scotty in a ton of metrics but you know uh, shots gain um, is, you know, right has been right behind Scotty all year. Uh, he actually, so in the last, you also in the last 50 years, minimum 20 rounds, Xander leads all players at plus 2.82 uh, strokes game per round at US Open. Some other names on this list that those kind of cool, Tom Weisskopf, second, Kepka third, Calvin Pete. Kind of surprising fourth, Tiger fifth, Payne Stewart sixth, Scotty Scheffler seventh, Tom Watson eighth. Um, but you can get Xander to win without Scotty at eight to one versus ten to one with Scotty. I think yeah, a, lot of value a, there. a little uh, disclaimer. So last for the PJ, I I gave that out when Jason had Xander as the winner. I gave that out as the the play. Instead of betting, doing them win, take them without and cost our viewers, uh, you know, about three to one because it was, I think it was 14 to win or 11 without. And of course, he, you know, he wins it. So, well, that the way I see it, you know, a Scotty Xander one to finish, already have that. I mean, you can have your cake and eat it too. Um, 
but he, yeah, I mean, you're giving up 10-1 to 8-1. to I don't think that big of a drop. Same with Morikawa. I mean, another one that he, I think, should have won Memorial last week. I mean, well, or thought he was going to win, not should have won after Scotty's triple and nine. Again, seemed to regain his form. He's also <clears throat> one of the best long iron players. I think Jay alluded to that, or Tom, you alluded to that earlier, that kind of have a lot of long irons in. Um, he's one of the best at that. Yeah, he's um, top 10 around the green, too, and shots gained. So another. Yeah. His putting is, is, you know, kind of it was weakness, but I feel like that's kind of steadied and kind of like Scotty. He doesn't need to be the best putter if he's above average. He's going to be in the mix, and he's been there uh, for a good part of the year. And again, Hideki, I can't believe I, I should have locked it in because I saw him at about fifty to one even yesterday. He's now I think forty to one. But you can again, Hideki without Scotty, thirty three to one. Um, so like I said, I already have Scotty in, you know, pole position with that. Um, but I like, you know, those three. Um, I do like Alex Noren um, yeah. to compete. I don't know to win, but when we get to like top fives, top tens. Yep. You know, I got I think him. He's in, yeah, six one of the top ten. Uh, he's a bulldog. And again, great on the, around and on the greens, been in good form. Um but if they, I mean, those are my four. I mean, again, some overlap there. But I like Scotty straight up, and then Xander Morikawa Hideki to win without Scotty. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I'll give mine before I kind of get into it. But you know, one thing you guys left out was one one of the numbers I looked at was bogey avoidance, which is I think key for this round is is pars, just trying to get pars, 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 and getting your birdies where you can. Um, and you know, shocker. Who's number one in bogey avoidance? Scotty Shaffley. Who's number two in, in, in bogey avoidance? Xander Shaffley. Um, so I don't think you look past those two. I mean, I know it's, you know, chalk, but I honestly don't think you look past those two. Interesting enough, do you know who number three as of bogey avoidance is? Um, PGA Tour only? Yeah. Yeah. Kevin just said uh, it. You just said it. Nora? Or Nora? Norin, yeah, wow. number three. So, um, you know, Matsui was number 13. You got Alberg, Fleetwood. So you got guys there. And I think that's what hurts the Gala a little bit is he has – He's very inconsistent. Broke, yeah. He's very inconsistent, yeah. Yeah. And and Kepka, too, in the last the two, last two majors, you know, he hasn't been, but he, he has been this year where you're seeing a lot more bogeys on his card than he has – in years yep. past. So, and I think that's where it really is going to get you because it's going to be tough to make those bogeys up with birdies. So it's all about pars, 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 and getting those. So that was what I, you know, that was one of them outside of the stuff you guys said. Um, so I, I didn't look past Xander and, uh, and Scotty. I mean, and I think Scotty's going to win, but you know, I have guys as well. Um, Norm was on my list. Um, like Kevin said, and we'll get into some of the, the longer shots, uh, longer shots as well. But yeah, Norm was one of the names that that I uh, kind of thought. And Fleetwood is another one that, like, at some point he's gone, he's going to win the U.S. I mean, not that you're a major, just winning the U.S. Yeah, he, I think he's got to win yeah. something no, before I don't he have wins him, a major. Yeah. It's just, I mean, he's so yeah. like all the numbers he's there to just you know for the, for this tournament. He's he, he yeah, I mean, he's an iron play guy and also. He's definitely a guy who could get top twenty. It's another so guy though that like fires off a low round, but then fires off like a you know four mm -hmm. over round, and it just you know it washes. That, yeah, I think if the wind, if there's gonna be some wind and like it's real carnage, Tommy would stand a better chance. But yeah. no wind. I mean, some of the, the elites that, that we mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. So, move. so questions before we go into some of the top ten top, have we? completely look past the um like the the live stuff at this point that we we don't think you know live guy coming over has any issues playing you know we talked about they don't compete as hard they only play the two days and blah 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 uh i mean you know the almost won the the pga right um the master one kept one pga last year Right. So that we're not, that's not even, you know, that makes it a little harder when you're looking at like shot, like some of the rankings. Yeah. Shot fiend, of course, but as far as. I mean, that, I think it, it's for the elite live golfers and really there's only. 
well, Rom's not in this week. So, I mean, DeShambo, Kepka, and, and I guess Cam Smith. But, I mean, those are really the only four live guys that I would give any shot to in any of these. Yep. EJ's done. He's not – he's – He's yeah, he, he was like ne- way down. Neiman kind of fell off. I thought he was kind of yeah, coming this year. But he's not looked good lately, so I, he's off of my radar for sure. Yeah, yeah I think right. the young then, Liv guys, are, they need those reps, and Liv has definitely hurt them. All right, and then I'll go, before we go, I'll give you some names that we weren't mentioned. So, I mean, Rory, not one person here mentioned Rory. Now, here's the now thing I think it hurts Rory. him. I, let me. Oh, I'm on record, and if my wife's listening, cover yours. It hurts him. He's getting back with his wife, so he canceled his divorce. Yeah. So I think it's gonna hurt his game. But does anybody, uh, you know, Rory? Like we said, wasn't mentioned at all. So the thing about Rory is like, you know how some of his sometimes his tee shots go wire, you know, way off and stuff yeah. like that. It's not gonna hurt him as much here. So maybe. Uh, yeah, so like, I, what, I'm against him to win majors. He just yeah, doesn't yeah. do it anymore. But he just doesn't nail those putts either. He has so many no. like miss, putt misses yeah. that are just so close. But he's, and, he's good with his irons and stuff. I, I mean, he needs possible. wet condition. Like that's why, like the PGH yeah. of Nahala, he that was prime. I mean, if you look at all of his majors that he's won, he's mm-hmm. all of them. I think the, the worst that he finished winning majors was like eight under. So he needs like a, a, a race track, a birdie fest. Mm-hmm. You know, British Open, the U.S. Opens. I mean, obviously the Masters, he has, you know, came close. But what's interesting, I did look up, is that Rory is the only player to finish in the top 10 in each of the last five U.S. Opens. So he has been in the mix. I mean, he's notorious, though, for kind of that Sunday backdoor cover, you know, yeah. top 10, top fives, uh, once he's out of it to win it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the thing with with this week, I mean, you have to almost play boring golf, right? You, you don't – it's not going to be Eagles. Like I said, not a lot of birdies. It's just, you know, pars are your friend. Um, That's why Xander, if that fits in, Xander is the king at that. Just par, 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 Yeah, par. and just boring golf. But Rory doesn't really – that's not in his yeah, – I think the inconsistent guys are going to start – it's going to be tough for them, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jason, you mentioned already the uh, DeChambeau. So that that long. I don't thing. think this. I don't think this course is fits his. You know his game. I, I don't. I, I just. I don't. You know. I listen. I think he's back. Right. Like he's he's legitimately a contender. Oh yeah. Uh, you know. Sure. But I just. Uh, you know. I I'd be very surprised if he's in the mix to win this. Did you see his um his new irons? No. That he's debuting. No. So they're 3D printed irons to like the exact spec. You know, he's like the mad scientist. But what's crazy because there's controversy whether they were go- the USGA was going to yeah. allow him to play them because they also have bit, like a slight curve. Like if you ever look at like a driver or a three wood, there's like a slight curve, which basically creates a um, it's not the bounce back of the gear like a gear effect. Mm-hmm. So he has this with his as if he needed more distance, but um, I don't know making a club change, you know, three printed irons. Like so they he look hasn't fun. used them on. He this is the first time he's actually using them for. Yeah, yeah, wow. in a in a tour, in a competitive tournament. But um, all right, how about Hovland? Hovland, he seemed to turn it around a little bit. I know we mentioned he fired his coach and went back to <clears throat> old swing, and I mean he's what is, I, I think he's what fifth. Fourth or fifth or fifth in odds, fifth or sixth. Yeah, uh, he had three good rounds last week and one bad one. So he's another guy. I mean, he, you know, if he wins, he'll he'll beat me. Um, but he's he's creeping back into contention again. But I I, I don't have money on him this week. All right, and then just a few more yeah. here. So the homers of the world, the Lowry's of the world, like nah, those I don't have guys that are always right, fringe players, the Henleys. Henley, Henley's a board guy for me. Uh, top 20 guy. The Cantleys, um, the ones that just can't uh, fade him. I, I almost I like, like can't wait to miss the cut. Yeah, I'm, I'm off of can't lay. He's lost. Sure. Young, Cam uh, Young, another guy that's there and just can't. And then last, Wyndham Clark, who's the 
the reigning champ. I mean, he's in bad. Form, he's in bad form. His form has been bad. Yeah, it's he bad. caught light, lightning in a bottle last year too. I mean, one guy. I mean, we named him, but not recently. Who? Because I think there's also been is it four or five U.S. Opens in a row? First time major winners. Um, Ludwig Oberg. You know, there was concerns about his knee. Um, yeah. Going to the PGA, I mean, he again. He's this is only his second, or I guess third major ever. Um, yeah, the, the thing I, all the time in the world. I find about him is like his odds. It's bad value, kind of his odds. Yeah, he's really, he, yeah, really short. he could win, he's but he shouldn't him, be like him and Hovland are the same. They're like twenty to one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like if he's thirty to one, yeah, I think he's a great bet. But like at eighteen, twenty to one, I, I don't know if his odds should be that that good. One um one other guy that again if his if he ever he's had wrist issues not in the best form but if he was I mean I think this is a perfect course fit and he's having his best driving year of his career and is a wizard around the greens is Spieth um, yeah I mean the creativity that you know this course is gonna require I mean he's made. I mean, more long putts than I've ever seen anybody other than Tiger make. But he's got that nagging wrist issue. Hasn't been in great form. I mean, but he's got to be. I, I didn't even. I was just trying to see what his yeah, odds are. Uh, this morning, it, today he was fifty-five to one. I don't on wow. Jack So I don't know if that still that was around noon today when I wrote it down. Yeah, sixty-five to one now. <laughs> oh, that's insane. That's crazy. Yeah, well, even like D, you mentioned John DJ, he's eighty. He was eighty to one this morning. It's like he just seems like he's done. done. Yeah, yeah, I know, but it's just crazy when you he's see. Yeah, he's just done. getting paid. I mean, Zalatoris, another one. I'm just seeing ninety to one. Yep. Yeah, eighty to one earlier. Yep. As the Red Sox tie the game. Yeah, I saw that they were uh, not yeah. looking too good. All right, so let's go, Jason. Some of some of uh, your board guys, top ten, top yeah. five, and then. A sleeper, I guess. If you have a long shot, I know you. Yeah. yeah. So my first, um, my first non-winner bet is you know Chef, uh, Chef Shoffley has finished top ten in ten out of the last fourteen majors. It's incredible. Yeah. So you, I got plus money on him to get top ten here. I mean, that was a no-brainer to me. Yeah, uh, plus one ten today. I don't know what he still is. Yeah, that's I I I got one hundred and five. I think so. That's even better odds. Uh, mm. Some of my top twenties. Uh, I thought Keegan Bradley was a good top twenty, um, so I threw a bet in on him. Uh, Norin, who you guys both liked, um, I also like him top twenty. I bet a lot of these guys at top thirty too, because as long as I was getting plus um, value on them, like plus uh, over over even money on them, I was I was betting them. Um, here's a long shot. I threw a little bet on him. He's probably not winning, but Aaron Rye, um, he's, this course fits him pretty well. And okay. he's good. You so got him. Aaron Rye, he is fifth in bogey avoidance. Yeah. I bet him at 250 to one, right? He's not <laughs> winning, good. but it's a fun bet. I mean, for a guy who this, this course kind of fits him. Um, but I got him top 20 and top 30. Um, two guys we had mentioned when we were talking about the, making the cut, Burmester and Bazudenheit. I bet both of them. I thought Terrell Hatton was interesting for, for plus money to top 20 and top 30 on this course. Uh, Russell Henley. And then my boy Straka. I had to throw him in. Um, I actually think I put a win bet on him too, but he's not winning. But uh, top 20 and top 30 for, for him as well. Uh, how about you, Kev? Uh, yeah, like I said, Norin, <clears throat> top 10, 6 to 1. Um, another guy who is a pick for another segment. Uh, Denny McCarthy, uh, top 10, you can get him plus 650. I mean, best putter on tour. I know it's not as maybe critical as around the greens, but at his short game, you know, is, is pretty elite. Um, a couple interesting miscut bets. Uh, DJ, again, you can get plus money, plus one fifty for him to miss the cut, and uh, Cantlay as well. 
I mean, I, I think he's his game's lost. Uh, I think he's also plus 150 to miss the cut. And then um, a another live guy, uh, top 20 Dean Burmester, which according to Data Golf, as far as its course fit, he's, I think, second behind DeChambeau. Yeah, he's so, a bomber. so with him, he he did his qualifying through the Florida rat, the Florida courses. So, as Jason yeah, alluded to, the guys, were, golf. man, so that could be a little advantage for him as well. So you I mean even at the top forty, you can get plus money in him at plus one twenty. Yep. Um. So, sprinkle some of those. Um. Like I said, I have a pretty short sheet of winners. Again, I mean, I don't think this is going to be a long shot course but um you know probably look at a couple more you know top region make cut parlays on top of ours but and then uh you know live bets it was tom's favorite sunday live bets yeah yeah because you get the i mean the, that's where you know the, i think it's data golf actually gives you i mean the the shots gained is like the information you get for each round and total tournament yeah. it's like I mean, it's, you know, you, you could just kind of piece it together what you're looking for. If you're looking for around the green, you're looking, you know, and, and guys that like in a particular stat that like they can improve on by the fourth round, but they haven't been the first like two, three rounds, then you, you know, that's the guys you look for. So it is, it is a good way to go. And some um, good, uh, some good odds boosters. Like if we, you know, we wanted to do parlays into like kind of boosting Scheffler's odds and all, it was like, you know, the Celtics to win the, 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 the series and the Panthers to win their the series. So would have been no Formula One. Yeah, Verstappen also. Max Verstappen. <laughs> Verstappen. I mean, he's his odds are actually not bad for this one. It's, on, it's minus two hundred. So um, definitely, uh, you know, those will. You know, if you want to make Scheffler five to one, you know, you throw a couple. Well, of those, Jay, I mean, uh, Kevin, you you said you with the Phillies and Pirates, you have them at ten to one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, that's, mm -hmm. you're sitting on. You could sell that ticket. I mean, that's golden. Yeah, 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 right, exactly. Yeah, and quickly, Mike. I mean, I I'm not really different than you guys. Norin was a guy uh, that I like. Bradley Keegan Bradley was another one I had. Dean Burmeister, like uh, Kevin said, was a guy. Um, for the same reason, and then Jason alluded to, who I you know like for the cut is the Christian Boozen who's in Doozen. So he uh, he uh, you know he, so I have I got he has a nasty short game. He, his scramble is is phenomenal around the greens. He's phenomenal. So you know and an even nastier name. And uh, yeah, and and he's a guy we've. I mean, I've been chasing him for God years now since years. he like hit the scene. Yeah, yeah. Um. And you know, I, I guess what would be interesting is who, the low South African because aren't isn't Burmeister and Boozen who's and Doozen they're yeah. both South African. That's that's they correct. Are South Africans. So I, yes. I mean, I'm sure I know Chalky usually has a low nationality mm -hmm. bet some yeah somewhere. So um, yeah, so I mean, it's it's you know, it looks like we're all big. It looks like we we're top heavy. But a uh, guy, I don't know how I missed him. But what, what about Tiger? What, what are you, oh, uh, he's he's not making this call. He's just a novelty at this point. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I hate to say it, but I mean, I'll probably still throw some on him to make the cut. I mean, there's some Tiger specials on. <laughs> I mean, just out of my allegiance. Um, but I mean, he's got his son as like a swing coach this week. Charlie, Charlie, what's his 13 year old son? So I mean, he's <laughs> yeah, he's kind of mailing it in. Yeah, it's kind of. Um, all right, before we do, so we always do our make the cut we'll, and we'll talk about it. Any, anybody else, anything else, any other bets, any, oh, anything? The one, yeah, the one last bet mentioned off air that I think we find is the winning tournament score, yes. which is at yep. 274 and a half. I mean, again, I think there's going to be a lot of carnage and you'll probably see maybe a couple under par winning it. So I, I really like it. I think it's a plus money or even money, um, to be basically five under or worse, I will be taking that. I feel like that's a bet where they're begging you to say Scotty Scheffler is going to shoot 10 under. You know what I mean? And they're yeah. begging you to just take the score to be, you know, better than 264. So 
and yeah. you're probably right. The, the way to go with that is to say it's going to be like four under or, or worse that wins this. So I, I would agree with you. Yeah, plus 100 right now. I'm yeah, I might, I might jump on Yeah, that. I mean, you would, if somebody, you, you tell me before the tournament starts, tell anybody, Scotty Scheffler wins this tournament. So it's already over. Scotty Scheffler won the tournament. You know, what did he shoot? Probably nine out ninety nine percent of people are gonna have a number that's Ten higher under. than yeah, yeah. It's higher than five under, yeah. right? So um yeah, I, I would agree. I, I like that as well. And that was something, Kevin, you did you do for no, you did for the PGA. Maybe we took because you weren't on our PGA show, you talked about it maybe at work we were talking about it at work. For PGA, you were like crushed that the over on oh on, yeah on for what are the under on un, or was oh, it the under, under? Yeah, it was yeah, it was, was way under. So, yeah, he almost set a record, didn't Shoffley almost set set a record? He's, he's yeah, yeah, under yeah, meaning it was. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm thinking um, that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, hit that one for a couple. Yeah, of so that was one, so that's, right. that's good. All right, let's talk about, so we always do our, our make the cut. So we, we hit the Masters, I believe. No, we did not. No, we lost the Masters. We hit the, we hit the players. players. Hit we the got players. players. Lost the Masters. Lost the PGA with, I think, two guys missing. Yeah, them, my right? guy was horrible. But to you, it was terrible. And then Chalky had Shraka, who also did not make the cut. Um, so we got we to gotta try to get back. And we already got it kind of oh, yeah. set prior to the show. But um, So, Jason, you have Chalky's pick to I make do. the cut. Yep. So I guess we'll start with we're going to throw Scheffler in. So we all agreed that Scheffler would have to, yeah. God knows, what would have to happen for him <laughs> not to make yeah, and it, I mean, it's just to clarify, that goes towards, like, the odds boosters, like Jason was saying and, and Kevin was saying. Like, you, you know, you're taking these guys that are – that are Slam dunks, not, pretty much. That are giving yeah. you, you know, point two, point, whatever it is, like from 420 to 450. So you're, you're making, you know, yeah. an extra 30 bucks out of it. Yep. On yeah. Lock. yeah, so Chalky has Siwoo Kim. Uh, and I'll throw mine in. I have Cam Smith, who – for some, I mean, I know he's not in great form, but his odds to to make the cut were. He's another guy a, though that like his good the he his majors are all good like he they're always, all good yeah he always performs well at the majors so yeah so I got minus I got minus one sixty four this morning but now as of taping of this it's like minus one ninety two still think it's great odds so I I I took him Kev. Yeah, and I went with uh, Grand Slam Breakfast, <clears throat> Denny McCarthy. Yeah, oh, it was – uh, Good short guy. Did I have McCarthy? Who did I have for the PGA? Not Denny McCarthy. Did I have McCarthy? No. Did you have Min Woo? No. No. Somebody, you I had think I somebody – McCarthy, I think, no, was – No, you had the, t- t- Taylor Moore. Taylor Moore, yeah, who did really mm-hmm. well. Uh, mm-hmm. But McCarthy, I you think, was on the – was on my short list because wasn't he a guy that like hasn't missed a cut or like he's like made 12 out of the last 13 or like a pretty good cut streak yeah. going i think his odds weren't great he was like minus two something so like he's he's legit i mean he's yeah you know, so he's, i think he's he a good was... golfer yeah and then for me i was between the like i said the, the burmeister the two south africans burmeister and uh, boozen who's and who's and uh, I wound up going with Boozin because, uh, I, you know, I, like I said, yep. I've been chasing him. And he did have the better odds, like more favorable odds, I should say, for, mm-hmm. for it to make mm-hmm. the bet better. Um, so, when yeah, when we punched it in, it became the uh, plus 451. Right. And without so, Scheffler, it was what, 420? I believe yeah. so, right? Yep. So, yep. yeah. So, we got, you know. An, an extra an extra boost out of it so that's where that could be probably and that make the cut which we've talked about in the past that's one you definitely shop shop around we've seen drastic differences between FanDuel DraftKings yeah. and some of those other yeah. ones yeah on on DraftKings Smith was like my, his odds weren't great it was like minus 215 or something but FanDuel for whatever reason I was not a fan of Cam Smith so we'll take it and then uh, I thought I saw I mean Kev you was Tiger was 220 plus 220 to to make the cut, if I remember, make, which is, to yeah, make the cut, which is crazy. I mean, that's like, I'm yeah, talking about how short Scotty's odds were. I mean, not since Ty- basically Scotty's odds are almost same to win as Tigers are to make the cut. So right, kind of- and uh, to clarify, it's uh, top sixty, I believe. 
That I don't know. I did not look that up. And ties in the U.S. Open, I believe, also has a 10-shot rule. So Mm -hmm. top 16 ties and anybody that finishes within 10 of the leader. So it could be more than – well, obviously with the ties, it could be more than 60. But even outside of the ties, it could be more than 60. It could 60. be significantly high, yeah. Do you guys notice because there's so many golfers, it's like foursomes that go off the first few yeah. days? It's pretty good. Yeah, cool. it's yeah. a I mean, even the last couple – tour, it was a, um, there was a threesome up until the final day. I forget which tournament that was. They've been doing that as often with yeah. like the delays and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, God, I can't remember. Which was one. it PGA? I think. Even. Was it the PGA? I thought it was one of them after the PGA, but like one of the bigger tournaments. But after the PGA, was it RBC? Oh, Heritage and yeah, it could have been. Yeah, it might have been RBC that I was. I can't. Remember. But yeah, I know they've been. I didn't realize they were doing four. So that's that's crazy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a huge field. Rounds. Yeah. All right. Anything else before we sign off here? Um. One another nugget. I mean, as if we haven't already talked about Scotty enough, but I was just looking at the money list after his win last week. Yeah, I saw that. So he's now won over twenty four million year to date, oh my which God. I think is if you take out like the FedEx uh, bonus money, would already be a season record. Um. And he's more than has more than du- one more than double than second, which is Xander, who's won just under twelve million. And one one of the PD, you know, one, one of the major, major. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's already far. He's what twenty three million was what he won last year total. I think I saw, and now he's already at twenty four. Yeah, I mean, year. when you win the players, the Memorial, the Masters, uh, last week's tournament, Heritage, Arnold Palm. I mean, all the yeah, luminous events. It's yeah, it's crazy. It's insane. Yeah, it's it's he's legit. I mean, like like you said, Kev, we haven't seen this since Tiger. We've said it before since Tiger. I mean, it's it's just what it. I mean, two. I think a major tournament, guys, plus two eighty. It's our. That's crazy. Well, yeah, I I believe I heard that these were the lowest odds to win a major since uh, two thousand nine, which would have been Tiger, and he actually lost yeah. that one. Whichever major yeah. it was, he actually lost that one. He finished yeah. second. Because he won the U.S. Open in 08, so it was probably the Masters, I guess, in 09. Uh, it was a or name was that I didn't – I, I don't think it was the Masters. It was a – it might have been PGA. Um, okay. It was like Yang, something like that was the name of the golfer. Oh, Y.E. Yang, that I was think PGA Y-E- champion. Was it PGA? Yes. That, and that was at um, – was that Firestone where tires won like eight times there? Yeah. yeah All right. So sure. before before we sign off here, Kevin, this is the first time you get the experience. This uh, we have a sponsor, Jason. Yep, Giovanni's Pizza is our, our sponsor. Uh, you tried the rest. Now try the best, Giovanni's Pizza. All right. So excellent episode one hundred and eleven of Broadsheet Hustle. Have a great night. Happy Father's Day, all.